Hey guys, welcome to Two Year of Course, and today we're discussing the amazing, the beautiful Des Moines. Now, let's go jump right in and go straight to modules here. Aiming systems will recommend 7% more to spare from main battery is good. The alternative options are AA gun mods, which if you hate carriers, you can run it against, but I do recommend aiming systems, you know. You can buff the gun. Main battery reload mod, battery mod 2 for the torch first can help, but the 5% additional reload is not nice. I think the turrets turn fine, it's because of the rate of fire of the guns. In terms of other modules here, I wouldn't recommend steering a gold propulsion mod, it turns relatively fine in my opinion. Definitely, definitely concealment mod, don't run steering, please don't run an agility build in Des Moines. I'm sorry Hepper, just don't do it, please, it's okay as it is. And a main barrier mod is what I recommend, but you could run for additional range, but the shells do get faulty at, ra at higher ranges and lose the velocity, so I think main battery mod is definitely what you want to do to improve that DPM. With our total build, 4.6 is our reload. The base reload is 5.5, we get a good sonar. We get the Minotaur radar, 9.9 .9 for 40 seconds. You can also pick up a spotter, or you can put the catapult out for Arthas as well, which uh, if you have him as well, that'll be pretty dear and juicy, buffing your damage to probably insane levels of probably like Odin in terms of like shell things. The heal is slightly worse than Baltimore, I don't mean like by like 5 points per second difference, you know. <clears throat> it's got a little bit more he health, of course, obviously these MK16 203s, pretty decent AA as well. These are bit, uh, bits uh, slightly actually faster than the Baltimore, but slightly less maneuverable as well. Armour scheme is coated in 27 with a 27 millimeter bow, which means you have the ability to bounce uh, 15 inch guns and above, which for a legendary tier cruiser is, I mean, it's good actually. I really like it, I think it's quite balanced. It needs that superstructure. There's a fair amount that can be farmed, so just be aware of that. You have this, but the main difference between this and the Baltimore it has a 30 millimeter deck which can bounce 16 inch guns and uh, not and, and below, of course. It, can, it can't bounce the Georgia and the Yamato, but from afar, from range, you can bounce the big caliber guns as well. The biggest issue though with this armor scheme in Des Moines is its citadel which is indeed raised and longer. It's not the typical American Baltimore Wichita citadel which is short and very thin as well as low to the waterline, even under the waterline. This thing is raised and this thing is big and the citadel itself is not very well armoured either. So you have a decent tankier top deck but your bottom deck side on you're actually more vulnerable than the Baltimore is. You additionally have the guns, they can be breaking, they can get broken relatively easily, but they are somewhat armoured as well, so just be aware of that. If you're comparing to the Baltimore here, you see the difference here. Part of it is out the waterline, a lot of it's underneath the waterline, the difference is extreme. So in terms of commanders here, I run Azure Lane Baltimore. If you have her, hey, great. If you don't, hey, whatever. Uh, there's an alternative options. You'll be on range, igniter, I don't like absolute ammunition because I feel the shells are beautiful the way they are, so I recommend punch through, but <clears throat> if you can't stand over pens, absolute ammunition will do the job. Fixated, people are tempted to run reflow station, I recommend against it. Go for fully patched, you definitely need the additional sonar, additional radar, additional heal, sustainability, more viability. Uh, also you've got Genichi Mikawa for additional stealth, probably a must have if you have him, and Francesco Mambelli for the reload. Or if you have Swirsky, he's a good option as well for reducing your stealth. If you have them at higher levels up, there's a high, there's a potential for a stealth radar. In my first game, I had Swirsky on it, but yeah. If you don't have Ashley Baltimore, you can run the same build on Norman Scott. Inspiration is just as good in increased accuracy. You just run the same thing as I had before with the same inspirations. You've got plenty of options. You could even, if you don't want to run uh, Minbelli for the reload, you've got plenty of options. You could run. Uh, even Sansanity for reduced damage to cruisers, or you increase your health, or you can increase the speed, or whatever you want to do. You know, you have plenty of options there. There's free commander for it as well. I like Baltimore because I have a spec for the heavy cruisers, and that's why I use it for that as such. So that's the build I have for it. That's the stacks, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll pop yourselves into the game. So, Des Moines. Uh, this is our division with Zalisto in his Montana and we're just messing around to see what's going on. Now, as I said, Des Moines plays a lot like Baltimore and New Orleans and it's kind of like a stationary hold your ground playstyle which is not like a lot of other cruisers. You've got to find a good position and you got to defend that position and 
you have that ability to do it because you basically get a position of interest. So for me here, I'm covering the Charlie camp, which we already have of course. I'm going to try my best to push in as much as possible without putting myself at risk. Now, once you do that, you've got yourself an opportunity to shoot at targets that are coming towards you, shoot at targets trying to capture the objectives, shooting at targets that are trying to win the game. That's your goal, your, your goal as a Baltimore slash Des Moines, whatever you play style here, as I mentioned before in Des Moines, in Baltimore, you want to be holding a position and you want to be that thing that, oh, I can't go that way because there's a Des Moines there. And that's basically how I'd recommend you play this boat. It is really good at that idea because the DPM this thing can provide, if anything comes in to your zone of control, it will be severely unhappy if it was ever there. <clears throat> You've got decent AA, nothing to write home about, I must highlight, you know, playing the boat quite extensively. It's not amazing in terms of A, it will get the job done, give it time, but you need to give it time. So carriers can absolutely still kill you, and uh, they're pretty much the biggest threat for you, bar the 16-inch gun battleships and above, especially the Yamatos. The Yamatos are very scary for Des Moines. You can 100% get death struck. Uh, it's happened to me once so far. Uh, by a Yamato that was firing HE the whole game. I was very surprised. I'm like, oh, he's firing HE. I kind of ignored him and then he switched AP at the right time. <laughs> so, yeah, you need to be careful in Des Moines. Uh, it is not like Alaska. It is not easily, like, uh, can't survive broadside for long. So, we got to respect that and we are actually going to push back a little bit. We're pushing forward a little bit again. We're just holding our ground and we're waiting for ships to come into our zone of control. These two DDs are a threat indeed. Not for us at the minute, but for our team. So if we can get some shots off on them, that would be great. We could possibly switch to H here, here, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to switch right now. Far what we got. Realistically, it's going to be pretty tough to hit these destroyers at this range. And you need to be abusing a line of sight with the mine. So the fact that we're shooting here and we're spotted means there's something ahead of us. It's the Cleveland. As Cleveland's kiting us at long range, he does a fairly good job at a GG to him. He did play quite smart, realising that uh, the Des Moines could absolutely wreck his day if he chose to stand and fight, and the better way is just to run away and use his DPM. Of course, his, he only has 152s, I've got two or threes. And just basically firing as much crap at the wall eventually something will stick, and he does get a fire on us, and that is not great a deal. We've got to be careful about this Iowa here. Again, that could do well, oh, that's, that's it. Could be all she wrote if we're not careful. Plus the carrier has taken quite a liking towards us, that's not exactly ideal, and uh, yeah, we're just going to do what we can. So, uh, Cleveland's doing a fairly good job, just keeping us distracted, but it means there's nothing really else here, so maybe we can push quite forward into this camp and really get these area of control there. The carrier is a parcel, so basically unavoidable, Citadel's always fun. Uh, Alaska could get a shot on us here, but I think the island will save us, and if not, we could just keep an eye on him and get some damage done on him. He looks like he's completely focused elsewhere, but just in case, we're going to slow down and keep, make sure the island is protecting us from any possible shots. As you see, the Des Moines shell arcs are insanely high, which means you've got great shell arcs shooting over islands, but not only that, they're very quick as well, and these 203s are magical 203s that can punch through just about anything. I've said the GK with these 203 guns are it's pretty considerable range, and getting in Alaska alone is pretty tough. This is the Cleveland, he's doing some fair work done as he got a double fire on us. Um, I didn't want to damage control just in case he got something else on us, but uh, hey, we're, we're pretty safe here and we can get some work done in Cleveland, but it looks like he's some sort of agility build. The thing about this is, oh, the carrier's still in front of us, ugh. <clears throat> we can't really avoid that, it's just 10k, we can't really avoid take, we just have to take, basically. The thing about doing this kiting playstyle here, it's, it works fine, you can do that. If that's the only thing you can do, it doesn't really do anything for your game here. Like that Cleveland, and not to be mean to him or anything, he did a good job in what he did. But um, he could have been doing so much more to win the game. Because you can, it's all great and Nandy doing that, but that decap has been taken. You know, he's not defending the objective, he's just stopping one ship. You're not doing anything by that, because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm in a position of control here. If they, have, if they want to capture Charlie, if they want to capture Delta, they got to go through me first. And that's really the point I'm trying to illustrate, that you want to be in Des Moines. This is how you get consistently good games in this boat. 
you want to get yourself in a good position where the enemy has to come towards you and they've got no choice but to push in. And this Cleveland basically has no choice but to push in. He can kite for all, all he wants, but it's not going to be a difference if they lose the game. Now, we're not as concerned about the right hand side because it's not what we are positioned for. And the Alaska could absolutely do some damage here. But we're keeping an eye on him here, we're just a little bit worried and we'll do what we can here. We're keeping with the AP because um, Alaska's, uh, Cleveland's being quite squirrely. And if we keep the AP on, we get a one broadside hit. That can be some serious damage to him. And he, there we go. He does a broadside hit. We do the, the shot from Alaska, or I'm not sure. It might just, just still be Cleveland there at this point. But we're going to push in. We've got him here. He's dead to rights. And then Mr. Killsteel comes in. And he steals the kill. And really annoying because he was, he was giving us quite some bother. So we need to see what we can do. Cleveland's still shooting us. And that's fine. That's all the residual shots. Now... We've got our great position, we're not spotted because of the island cover, and we can just absolutely tear apart anything that comes into the B-Cap, which means the Minotaur, the Conqueror, and I think there's another Conqueror, I'm not even sure at this point, they are just getting pound town. <clears throat> and as you can see, islands don't mean a thing to the, to the Des Moines, except, uh, you know, that's 14 kilometers and it arrives in five seconds, or three seconds. The, the, shell, the shell velocity is actually insane. Unlike any other American boat, you don't actually have to give much lead at all. So if you're used to playing likes of Baltimore, you need to reduce the lead that you give because these shell arcs are very, very quick. <clears throat> so it doesn't lose too much speed over the distance as well. 10 seconds for 14 and a half kilometers is quick. And as you can see, we're just absolutely ruining the Conqueror. Guys, if you don't shoot AP in this boat primarily, you're playing it wrong. It doesn't matter what the Conqueror was doing. I think it was one stream the Conqueror just was basically bow tanking us, thinking he could avoid the AP damage. We just, just absolutely ripping his superstructure and getting consistent 8k, 5k, 7k, 9k, 10k. It just adds up and it brutalizes them here. We've got 10 over pens, 6 pens. We've barely got, we've got just the amount of over pens we're getting is insane. And it's just, we need to aim even lower. This is the problem, we're not aiming high enough. We're aiming, we're not aiming, uh, we're not aiming uh, low enough. We need to aim actually lower to get the results we want here. We just absolutely murder that uh, Conqueror. He's about to get torpedoed anyway, but still. Now we're just gonna kick it in reverse so we get good shots on Alaska. We're just working on him. And as you can see, we even had like 30K or something stupid, like 40K, and now we're up to 128. You see, when you get that position in Des Moines or in Baltimore, same idea, the damage just adds up and you can see the damage you can push out. The damage you can dump out is insane. The DPM of these two or threes is nothing to laugh at. It's actually insane. Brutalizing this Alaska. He goes down to the Peters again. That, uh, those DDs are doing some mad work, I tell you that. Now, <clears throat> it's just the Iowa, the Minotaur, the Parsifal, and the Destroyer left. Now, I'm, I can feel I can get some good shots and I without him noticing us. And uh, this is near the end of the game here, as you can see. Pretty darn clean up of the game here. And we're just going to get what we can on the shots in Iowa. Again, because he's behind an island, this is, these are the positions you want to get into. This is the key, key position you want to get into with the Des Moines. And yeah, you can see this, this it's just, we're just getting five pens there, three over pens. I mean, we're getting barely any shatters. We see the Minotaur, see what we can do here. Carrier is coming in for more again. The the DP the A is not amazing. It does work, but it, you got to give it the time to perform. And unfortunately, these are parcel torps, basically unavoidable torps, and that's just how it goes. But you know, he's been focusing on this whole game, and he's been losing a lot more planes than he realizes he's losing. And uh, yeah, it's not gonna be too much. Uh, enemy any conqueror uh, Cabros picks up clear sky. It's interesting. Uh, Minotaur, we're just gonna keep shooting AP. Iowa pops in, which means we need to deal with the Iowa very quickly. Probably one salvo will get rid of the Minotaur, but I gotta make sure it's done. There we go. Now we can start focusing our attention towards Iowa. He's still angled, but we're just gonna aim up on his upper deck and we'll still get comfortably pens here. As you can see, we're just gonna keep it up here. We gotta keep our angle here. The best thing we can do at this point is not give him a flat broadside or a flat bow on. We wanna keep an angle to try and minimize the damage. And there we go. We minimize the damage. I think it's just one citadel here. And now we have the parcel to go for. Bit of misplay here. Uh, I wanted to go in reverse here. I did duke the, the final salvo, that the, the parcel salvo that could have killed me, so that's always good. And uh, that's good here, but I really should have gone, stayed in full gear here, full gear here to try and pursue that carrier 
to get even more damage in. We're going to try to get some blind fires in here and see what we can do. We still get another Citadel and Pyrrha guy. Well, it's part of me don't to feel bad for him. And yeah, basically the whole CD side, that, that consistent cap income, has really gave us a commanding position. Even if we were down on ships, the game would have been over pretty soon because of the capture progress of the Sir Charlie Delta camp. A spawning on its side, pushing it and holding at the right time, controlling our area and making sure that any ship that gets near that area is deleted or is decentivized to push forward. You see the power at a good position of the Des Moines. Good heavy cruiser play, getting rid of the big targets and just catching people's broadsides for the immense DPM this thing can provide. Doesn't even matter if you're broadside because you have HG and you have the AP that is nectar of the gods this AP. I can't stress that enough. If you're not using AP the majority of this game, of, of, of majority of a Des Moines game, then you're playing the boat wrong. Even if the target is angled towards you, you can aim up and hit that superstructure at the upper deck. You get some meaty, meaty pens. Sometimes, yes, absolutely switch to HE, but it's a rare case. Obviously, destroyers want to switch to HE as well. And you see, the A of the Des Moines does actually give us a clear sky. Um, he, I think he was avoiding our mid range AA or short range AA, and I think that's most of where our damage comes from. He, I think he was dropping us from quite far away, and uh, we weren't taking too many planes down as a result. But the Des Moines AA is respectable, and if you really hate the CV gameplay, as I said, the first module, you can always swap out for AA mod and get a little bit more bang for your buck when it comes to AA. You're losing 7% dispersion on your main guns. So that's a take you want to take. Usually, you know, carriers are relatively rare somewhat, but uh, just be aware of that, you know. Obviously, I'm dealing with new ship syndrome, you know. Uh, you've got the fancy kill me now camel and you're flying a new boat, so carriers are probably naturally interested in this boat. You know, by the time the boy will come out, you'll have a lot more options and you may not need to run the A gun mod at all. So guys, that is 207,000. Confederate, high caliber, and clear sky with 3.6 base. Guys, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned a lesson, and tell me what your thoughts in Des Moines. Are you can't wait to get it. Are you researching it now? Are you going to plan to boost it? Or whatever you want to do, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Bye for now.